I'm really excited about introducing you to a way of thinking that is, I think, going to help you with your jobs of helping other people solve problems. I have entitled this little video, Nurturing a Culture of Inquiry. Some of the characteristics of transdisciplinarity are the focus on being and experiencing and the knower being part of the knowing as opposed to the focus on knowledge, fixed knowledge. It involves multiple levels of reality such that there's an acknowledgement that many different things are going on at once and we are conscious of one level perhaps, or in any case we're not conscious of all the levels of things that are going on. It also acknowledges complexity, that humans are complex within and that the environment is complex as well. One thing that you could think about is that the whole is greater than the sum. That you can think of all the separate parts, but Without thinking beyond disciplines, you are not going to necessarily see the whole picture. There's space between the words. I want you to participate by thinking actively. And that's a suggestion, it's an invitation. There's stuff going on besides the obvious. Transdisciplinarity concerns that which is at once between, beyond, and across disciplines. Its goal is the understanding of the present world, of which one of its imperatives is the unity of knowledge. This idea of transdisciplinarity does not negate or um, diminish the value of disciplines. Disciplinary thinking has been extremely helpful in terms of focusing the way we the way we go into depth uh, in certain areas. We could not have the depth that we have in certain disciplines if we had not kind of put on the blinders and focused really deeply in one area. And so the disciplinary thinking has been very helpful. It's just that too much of it begins to frame the way we think and predispose us to only making certain kinds of observations even. Generally, as I mentioned, we think in dualities. Classical logic involves defining what goes on on one side, on each side of the dichotomy. For example, this is right and this is not right so that it's wrong. We have a right and a wrong. With transdisciplinarity, you're invited to think beyond the dualities to another level of reality, which would involve something that's not, not A. This third, rea this third level might be called reality, with a capital R. It might be called the third alternative. It might be called the ineffable, the irreducible. But it's something that is beyond this, you can't parse it anymore. And this is uh, documented by D.W. Winnicott, a psychologist, that when a baby experiences his life, his or her life with his or her mother, he or she is not necessarily seeing him or herself as separate from their mother. There is a blending of people. So it's, it's not, the mother is not me, but the mother is not not me. So there's this other, it's not even another being, it's not a third being, it's a third way of perceiving the two beings together as, as, as not, not each other. And I would call that predisciplinary because the baby has not yet begun to think in terms of separating things out. This also is supported by neuroscience because Blakesley and Blakesley in their studies of body movement and embodiment and the brain have shown that each of us has a body map. 
whenever we make a gesture with one hand, that the, the body map that is associated with that, this hand or this arm is ignited. Same thing for every part of our body. And what Blakesley and Blakesley have found is that the body maps may extend beyond our own bodies. So that mother and child, lovers, people who are intimate, even people perhaps who wear a large hat, their body maps may extend into that hat. So our body maps, the way we experience our bodies, is flexible and develops with our experience and the importance, the emotions that are associated with those experiences. Awareness, attention, attentiveness, mindfulness, witnessing, witnessing our, our own state. The whole idea is that a way to access the included middle is to be aware of yourself. Self-awareness, what are you feeling emotionally? What are you feeling physically? What are your motivations? What are you, are you experiencing any habits? So just reflect for a moment. I want to invite my camera person to do the same thing. Transdisciplinarity in order to carry it out requires a fearlessness regarding error, a disposition to embrace the ceaselessly new, and not restricting innovation to achieve acceptance. So it really requires a lot of courage not only to witness yourself rigorously, recklessly pay attention, it also requires that you do that without worrying what other people will think, because the, what other people will think is more on this level. They like it, they don't like it. The public favors it, the public doesn't favor it. We're trying to get outside of that duality to this idea of what's valid is what I'm witnessing. I want to suggest that you think about these ideas the next time you're working on a problem-solving practice where you are looking at the complex elements of a problem, how it feels to you to be inside the problem, identifying perhaps with the people that are experiencing the issue that you're trying to solve. And finally, I have an image that I want to leave you with, which is a person inside a triangle. There's knowledge, there's ignorance, and there's wonderment. I want to encourage you to think about the value of wonderment. And if you could just quickly scan these references, you'll um, you'll see where the images come from. <laughs>